finally, for the last part of the lab, we can actually directly detect the beat note between the different frequencies coming out of the laser. If our laser, and here's one, we're using one of the longer tubes here, is actually putting out three or four different frequencies, then those, those rays interfere with each other. And if you shine them into your photo detector over here, it should be you know, flickering at whatever that frequency is. So you've calculated that frequency for this particular length of laser. This one is 410 millimeters from one end of the tube to the other, not including the little end caps. Okay, so the mirrors themselves are buried inside the tube somewhere. So the actual spacing between the mirrors is can't be greater than 410 meters, millimeters, and it's probably a little bit less. So you can use that to figure out what the mode spacings of this laser should be. We're shining it into a little photodiode over here, and, and this particular photodiode has a fast enough response time, so it should be able to pick up whatever that, that frequency is. So how can we directly detect that? Well, if that frequency turns out to be you know hundreds of megahertz, our oscilloscopes that we use typically in lab only will sample up to 60 or some of them up to 100 megahertz. And so, so we have no chance at all of detecting a 400 megahertz signal. So how can we detect that on our oscilloscope? Well, here's what we're going to do. We take the signal out of the, fo out of the uh, photodiode over here and run it, first run it through an amplifier because it's, it's not very, 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 uh, a very big signal uh, to, uh, to get the, a, a photodiode that has a fast enough response time to uh, pick up uh, a hundreds of megahertz signal. You actually have to use a very small photodiode. It's not very sensitive but it will respond quickly to the signal. So we run it through an amplifier, and then we run it into what's called a mixer. The mixer uh, takes that, the output of our amplifier, okay, and that goes into what's called the RF input of the mixer, because our signal is, is kind of is radio frequency. It's hundreds of megahertz, which is, in the, uh, is a radio frequency. So it goes into the RF input of the mixer, the L for local input over here is connected to a function generator, which can generate signals in the hundreds of megahertz range. What the mixer does is it takes those two signals and multiplies them together internally, basically using a diode. But it, you end up with the product of two different frequencies. And if you calculate it, if you go back to your, your basic uh, trigonometry and calculate what the product of two sine waves, sine omega one, Sine times sine omega 2 uh, looks like, one of the terms that comes out is a difference frequency between the two. So if, say, our RF signal is at 400 megahertz and we mix it with a signal at 410 megahertz, say, from our, from our function generator, then what should come out would be a 10 megahertz difference signal. So we can now put our unknown RF signal, whatever frequency it is, uh, mix it down to a signal that we can now display on our oscilloscope. So when I turn on, when I turn on the, uh, the sensor, we can see some signal there. Currently, we're sending in 410 megahertz, and we see a signal on our scope. All right. Now I'm going to go in one megahertz steps and change the local oscillator signal. As you can see, as I do that, as I get lower and lower, our beat note drops in frequency. Until it meets, 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 a, meets a minimum, right? right around at 399 megahertz. Right? And then as I keep going down, the frequency starts going up because now our difference frequency is, is increasing again. So I can very quickly zero in and, and say the beat note coming out of our laser is about 399 megahertz. 